Okay, welcome back. It's kind of a big day. I'm going to try and uh, get the bus control in and working. I want to remind myself what the code does that's currently programmed into this. So, okay, so we've got a sequence of four load from memory operations which aren't fully functional because we don't have a memory bridge but this will do loads into A, B, C and D sequentially. So yeah, we got two knobs here because the memory system was uh, taken up by the memory loads. So C and D. So and that's a constant load of zero we assign to A and then these are three XORs of B with B, C with C and D with D. So that should be setting these to all to zero. I'm a little bit sceptical this is going to work perfectly first time so I'm going to try and ease myself into it and try some portions of it. Power it down. So let's do the 8 bit registers first. It does look pretty good. Set, which is there. And a clock line I can pick up from there. Once this is doing all of this work, we can just tidy all of that out of the way. Okay, so ALU select and the main bus control are what we need to get in. That is ALU select. No, that's the ALU output. ALU select is this pair. Probably going to need a new cable for this to keep it neat later on. I believe that was left then right, which is the opposite way around over here. Our main bus control is pipeline up here, so this should be these ones. This should be load, load and assert. Which way around did I put them on here? If I was smart, I would have cut new wires for all of these. Okay, let's see what happens when we power that up. So we've got a certs on LHS and RHS, which is what we'd expect. So this should be a load into A, and that gets to here, which 
isn't what happened. That did nothing, and then that loaded D. Binary pattern for D is 4, so that's 1, 0, 0. And we were expecting there to load B, which is in address 2. So that's the wrong way around. Load of A, B, C, D. Outstanding. So, next instruction coming in will be another move into A. And then we're going to get increment A, B, C, and D. Ah. Okay, so this line here is what tells the ALU to assert to the bus and we've moved the bus control down into this new circuit. I don't think you can quite see this. It's just the one line down in the bottom. That's working now. So the increments are working. That, that means all of this side of the bus control is working correctly. That's good. Okay, let's plug this one in. I really hope this works because that looks fantastic. Okay, right, wires going into there. Dress select. That was one of the ones up here. Then we need the increments. So increments were split, so that's going to be this and this. transfer bus control. So these are the assert lines which go in first. No, that's not right. And then the lower four lines over here, this one in the middle is just a ground pin, but the lower four lines over here are the extra bus load and decrement. So that's this cluster over here with a clock wire put into it. That's everything, I think. So we've got an assert address on the program counter. That's promising. Program counter is incrementing fine. Yes, this is all working. There's our 16-bit Fibonacci sequence. I'm confident that this is working exactly the spec. Let's see if we can uh, get these boards out of here now. This reset line can go into this board directly because we don't need it over there anymore. 
clock line can come directly into here. In fact, we're not really distributing the clock line in the way we used to. That should reach there itself. And then we don't need this. I was really proud of this cable. It kept us semi-neat while we were still working with all the breadboard control logic, but uh, not as neat as this. Table was just this bit down here, which was the old uh, constant register lines. Okay, so this can definitely be made a bit tidier. Power can go directly in there. Is there anywhere I can bridge reset? slightly annoying because I've got a turn pin pair in there for the power. These just don't fit in there right. Next time I've got the soldering iron warmed up I'll uh, put a two pin DuPont style connector in here. For now we can keep things rolling just by putting in a little bit of bus bar to serve as an adapter. with that. Let's write up some code to test the other increments and decrements. addresses down here for those memory reads happening. Now this is this is incredible. Something about getting that bus control board in and getting a bit of rigidity between these boards kind of is allowing me to envisage what this whole thing is going to look like. The transfer register when it's finished will come along here. So we've got the control lines for it here and all the various bus lines are sat here on these boards that it needs. ALU will collapse down onto one PCB, pipeline onto another, and then we've got the clock and the memory, which uh, they can kind of move around a little bit depending on what gives us a, a nice aspect ratio. But I cannot say how chuffed I am that this is looking so good and it's actually worked first time. This is you know, more than twice as many chips as any of the other single circuits I've done on PCB. Okay, well, I think this can afford to be a short one after the uh, schematic and soldering video for this board. So I very much hope you found this interesting. I'm very pleased that this didn't turn into a uh, kind of troubleshooting and working out what I messed up video. So this is great. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.